Most gamers have a title from their childhood that they fondly remember or still play to this day that's, well, not particularly good. In my case, it was 3D Cyberpunk, also known as Cyberpunk, 3D Cyber Blaster, and 3D Ball Blaster. To this day, one of the greatest games ever, released on a heavily modified version of Pie in the Sky Engine. Okay, that doesn't make it that great. Why all the different names? Well, it's a spiritual successor and remake of Ball Blazer by Lucasfilm Games, published by Epix, a company that the two founders of this game's publisher were former members of, so they probably had a fair idea of what this was going to be. It's hockey meets football, or Quidditch without the snitch, but 1v1 in the future and with floating cyber cars. There's a timer counting down, and the first person to score five goals wins. The first level is exceedingly simple. You chase the puck, pick it up, and then navigate your way with the arrow keys into a scoring position before pressing space. Your opponent can ram you though, and initially you move slower with the puck in your grasp than they do. So you have a limited amount of time and possession energy, which depletes on your HUD when you're rammed, before the puck goes flying off out of your control again. Likewise, your opposition will also be chasing this puck and trying to score, and if they pull off a long shot at your goal and succeed, then they're rewarded two points instead of one. The AI is wonky, either being too difficult or an absolute dawdle, and you're rewarded money for your efforts at defeating it after each match. The game will direct you to go to the shop, and there you can pick up power-ups for your vehicle. These are split in two and come in the form of abilities you can use on the track and passive bonuses to smooth things over. Your opponent will also be getting these upgrades though, depending on their difficulty level. They can be activated by pressing the helpfully labelled buttons on your machine's HUD. Will I be listing all the power-ups and their effects here? No! Go play Cyberpunk for half an hour on easy mode and you'll have experienced them all yourself. The textured 3D engine was genuinely impressive in 1992, predating Doom and Descent and coming out the same year as the likes of Ultima Underworld and Wolfenstein 3D. It can cause motion sickness though, so you've been warned. Unfortunately, the soundtrack from the dungeon accompanying those visuals is decidedly average OPL noodling, and the goals are not greeted by the roar of a crowd, but instead by sped up chipmunk voices akin to lemmings or worms but without any of the charm. It was a staple of the shareware scene to include random and often plagiarised sounds that made little sense over suspect music, and it's one area that hasn't aged well in the slightest. Later levels introduced pylons and explosives on the track, as well as warping areas and goals that move, and the minimap only gives you a rough layout of the track, rather than an accurate one. A radar in its place would have been preferable, and these lack of refinements and gameplay irritations hold it back significantly. The on-track alterations cause a degree of randomness that certain players won't appreciate, and the level design is unremarkable at its best and borderline reskinning at its worst. But you know what? When I picked it up and I played it again, I did have fun, which is kind of the point. So while in 2023 you're not going to be treating Cyberpunk with more than mild curiosity, back in the day the novelty of both its first-person engine and the easy-to-learn sports elements made it a fine piece of shareware to break up bouts of other better games, as there was nothing quite like it. Until Hover was released three years later on the Windows 95 CD. I should probably play that again.